Hello Moonies, I am back with another screen cap redraw of one of the most iconic animes, Sailor Moon. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my screen cap redraw video series. Previously on my channel, I have recreated screen caps from Howl's Moving Castle, Kiki's Delivery Service, and Card Captor Sakura. So basically with these videos, I like to recreate a scene from a TV series or movie in my own style, and I like showing you guys the process of that while casually chatting about my love of the series and basically whatever tangents the topic takes me. Kind of like a podcast, except it's just me talking out loud rather than an actual conversation with another person. <laughs> Quarantine vibes, right? <laughs> anyway, so uh, as always, all of the art supplies used in today's video will be listed in the description. And for those of you who are wondering, the Sailor Moon Compact on the left that you see here was a gift from my friend who had hand-painted and embellished a real highlighter compact for me. And the wooden pin I bought from an artist at a convention many years ago, I'll have their Instagram linked in the description as well. So if you're fairly active in the art community on Instagram, a few weeks ago, or was it a month ago? Uh, my time, uh, my sense of time is completely warped these days. But anyway, you probably would have seen, uh, you know, another wave of artists recreating their own version of uh, a Sailor Moon recap, screen cap. And while I actually have already done this in the past, I thought that it would be fun to try it out again so that I could make a video about it. And also, I pretty much never get tired of. Uh, drawing fan art for Sailor Moon, so it was a win-win all around. So I decided to choose this screenshot because one, I think it's beautiful, and two, I thought that it would be a really good uh, opportunity for me to practice profiles since it's not something I find that I'm very strong with, and lastly, it's a bit of a tribute to my first childhood crush. <laughs> I'm sure those of you who have been with me for a hot minute already know that Sailor Moon is a series that is very near and dear to my heart. It was the first anime I ever watched when I was a kid and I was completely obsessed with it. To be honest, I am still totally enamored by it to this day. How could I not love a series that follows magical girls fighting evil by moonlight and winning love by daylight? But um. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. I know it's so cheesy. But seriously, I think that there is truly something so empowering about seeing a series show that women can be both feminine and fierce. You can, you know, you can be girly, but you can also fight crime and serve justice. And I think that's just an amazing thing for for uh, kids to see, whether it's girls or boys or, you know, everyone in between. So, and I think that is that notion of uh, pairing femininity with uh, strength is something that subconsciously has always been something I strive for in my artwork. And I think a really big appeal of the series as well is that all the different Sailor Scouts have distinct personality traits. And so that allows uh, everyone to find someone that they identify with, whether it be, you know, Usagi herself, who loves video games and is a crybaby and is bad at math, or someone like, Ray, who is really fiery and feisty and competitive, but you know, there's so there's something for everybody. And most importantly, I think the show is really cemented on friendship. And I think that is just such a key element to champion, especially for a show that's generally geared towards uh, a younger audience. And I think that the appeal of Sailor Moon is similar to what I loved also about the Spice Girls when I was younger. Uh, like those two things really dominated my, my childhood because it was all about girl power and friendship and that's just like the best thing ever. <laughs>
When I was really little experiencing Sailor Moon for the first time, Sailor Mercury was my favorite. I think I had identified with her the most because in elementary school, I was shy and quiet. So I really related to the fact that Amy had a much more softer demeanor. And I have a distinct memory of trying to literally color my hair blue with a Crayola marker because I wanted to look like her. And I can say that dreams do come true because as an adult, I actually have had blue hair in the past. Currently it's purple, but I have had gone through many shades of blue and it's fun. I love having colored hair. It's like, it's its own accessory in and of itself. <laughs> but yeah, of course, uh, I have revisited the series into my adulthood. And now I think my favorites are a bit of a toss up between Sailor Jupiter and Sailor Mars. I just love the fact that um, Mako is this tough gal who, you know, got kicked out of school for beating somebody up, but also loves baking and sewing and has little rose earrings. I think it really reinforces the notion that you can have both traditionally masculine and feminine traits simultaneously. And then with Rey, I mean, she is so feisty and fiery. How how could I resist? It's, it's infectious. <laughs> Plus, I will never not be obsessed with her iconic pink overalls. I want that outfit in my life. <laughs> And as I mentioned before, Tuxedo Mask, aka Mamaru, was definitely my first childhood crush. I just thought he was so dashing in his suit and, you know, he'd be throwing roses everywhere and I thought he was so suave. But I will say I freaking love that meme of him like whisking in and out and the caption under Sailor Moon just says, but you didn't do anything, <laughs> which is pretty accurate for most of the time. Tuxedo Mask, he mostly just served as a distraction and basically moral support with his encouraging, inspiring words to Sailor Moon or uh, the other scouts. But, you know, I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at, you know, this male character who mostly is serving uh, as moral support. I think that's great. <laughs> Something that I've seen people wonder is why is there no Sailor Earth? And my favorite answer to that is that Tuxedo Mask slash Prince Endymion slash Mamoru is Sailor Earth. <laughs> Since he's the only one that actually was born on Earth originally, all the rest of them were born on the moon. Uh, and so I'm absolutely here for this theory. I think it's adorable. <laughs> And speaking of crushes, I also definitely had a little crush on Sailor Uranus, aka Haruka, as well. Of course, like many of you, I'm sure I, uh, I originally grew up watching the English dub of Sailor Moon on TV. And not only did they change a lot of the names because they thought Japanese names were too difficult for North American audiences, whatever, but they also tried to pass Haruka and Michiru as cousins, which I just think is so hilarious looking back at it. Cause I feel like even as a kid, I remember thinking to myself, like their interactions, their behavior, it seems too affectionate to be cousins. And I know that, I know the reason why they did this, of course, because having a lesbian couple on TV, especially for a, a show that was aimed for children at that time was just like completely unheard of and too scandalous or whatever. But if anything, I think that it might have just confused children into wondering what their dynamic with their cousins is supposed to look like. <laughs> In, uh, in my Card Cap Sakura screen cap redraw video, I, uh, I, talked, I touched on, uh, you know, American dub censorship with other animes as well. And I'm really glad that we're now in a place, as far as I know, that uh, that doesn't really happen anymore. I think that even though I personally prefer to watch uh, 
anime in Japanese with the subtitles typically. Uh, I do think it is much better to try and keep the show intact as much as possible when you are interpreting it for a North American audience. Which, by the way, so much of the 90s fashion in Sailor Moon, kind of, you know, just going back to Ray's pink overalls, I think that it's amazing to see how a lot of the trends and fashion from the 90s, especially in, in Sailor Moon, has kind of cycled back and is now trendy again. And I am totally here for it. I... I also think that there is something truly so iconic and um, recognizable about the 90s anime style that the original Sailor Moon series was in as well. Uh, the way that the eyes are drawn, the the general aesthetic of the, the fashion, the backgrounds, the color schemes, uh, and especially those transformation sequences, um, all these things have really been embedded in pop culture and I think has, you know, of course, influenced so many other things after the fact. Uh, I was joking with somebody who uh, who doesn't watch Sailor Moon, but has you know seen screen caps or you know heard me talk about it and seen it kind of in a peripheral way. And he was like, "Oh, vaporwave is just basically all Sailor Moon background aesthetics." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, it's pretty true." <laughs> And on that note, I guess it's worth mentioning uh, my thoughts on the revival series, uh, Sailor Moon Crystal. So to be fair, I actually have only read a few chapters of the original manga. So the majority of my experience with Sailor Moon came from the 90s anime. When I heard that they were basically rebooting the series by uh, reanimating the story and following closer to the manga, I was really looking forward to it. I think. I had a bit of the like Full Metal Alchemist versus Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood expectations because for those of you who don't know, Full Metal Alchemist is a manga that got translated into an anime twice. Uh, the first round having deviated from the original story and then the second round they had followed the manga and the latter was significantly better in my opinion. And so with Sailor Moon, I was really looking forward to seeing a version of it that was a bit more concise and uh, more plot driven because admittedly the original series did have a lot of kind of filler-esque monster of the day episodes and it was really stretched out. So I was looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, yeah, just a, a more, uh, yeah, concise version of Sailor Moon. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I just think that the 90s version was just so embedded into what I viewed Sailor Moon to be. And so I ended up being a little bit disappointed with the new Crystal series. I was so accustomed to how humorous and goofy the original show was, which made the new version feel so much more serious. And again, I have very little knowledge of having read the manga, so I didn't really know what to expect. And uh, ultimately, I wasn't really crazy about the, the just the general style of the animation, and I really disliked the uh, the 3D animated transformation sequences. The The thing about uh, that I love about anime in general most of the time is that it's, um, you know, a traditional 2D flat style of animation so yeah the 3d transformation i was like not here for <laughs> but then uh the series got revamped again for the third se the third season and not not re revamped by story but uh the style of the animation and i definitely think that it was way more appealing and uh, I liked the that style of it a lot more and they added in more of that bubbly energy into the show as well but I don't know, I just kind of ended up falling off the bandwagon at some point in terms of keeping up with it. And admittedly, now that I'm talking about it, I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll maybe I'll try and try and watch it again. Maybe I'll try and pick it up. So if you guys are uh, if any of you guys are keeping up with Sailor Moon Crystal, let me know what you think about it, because I'm curious to know 
if it's uh, if it's worth me picking up again. Oh, and something that I haven't touched on yet is my love for the villains in Sailor Moon as well. There's so many of them and they all have very distinctive, cool, interesting character designs and they just have so much flair and attitude. I loved that a bunch of them were named after gemstones like Zoisite and Kunsite, but I gotta say, I think my favorite villain design has always been uh, Kone uh, Ayakashi. I thought that she was so freaking stylish and she had probably the best outfit of all the Sailor Moon characters in the show. <laughs> I just think she looks so good. Also, I found that her kind of uh, overly self-absorbed and petty personality to be really, really entertaining. <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, and then later on, I found out that not only her look, but many of the designs in Sailor Moon were inspired by a lot of runway fashion, uh, especially in like the mid 90s. And I think that is something uh, I love seeing. And it's really relatable to me because I, I myself am very inspired by uh, fashion in my own work as well. But yeah, needless to say, Sailor Moon has always been and always will be a humongous uh, inspiration to me as an artist and really has had such a huge influence on, I think, a lot of my interests uh, as a person <laughs> as well. And of course, has influenced so many um, series and things after it, like... I don't know if you guys are familiar with the show Star vs. the Forces of Evil. It's a really, really fun uh, show and it's much more current. And I remember watching it and thinking, wow, this is very much inspired by Sailor Moon, especially the fact that, you know, um, Star is a princess from a different planet and she's got magical powers and she's, you know, plopped onto Earth and makes friends with a human boy. It, there's so many parallels, but it definitely um, made its own kind of uh, mark and had its own voice as well. So I love seeing the influence that Sailor Moon has had and how people are able to transform it into something new. But anyway, I love chatting fandom with you guys. So let me know who your favorite Sailor Scout is. And uh, yeah, in the next video or next screen cap redraw, I'm thinking I might do Sashomaru from Inuyasha or maybe something from Avatar The Last Airbender. Anyways, that pretty much wraps up the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.